and I'm going to hit go live. Hopefully it's going to work with no trouble because it nah, loves us. It's fine. To be happy. <laughs> it's fine. It's going to be great. All right. It says recording. Oh, it does. Fine. All right. So I just want to get myself set up over here so that I can see any questions or comments as people join us, which is so exciting. Last week we had a whole bunch. Hopefully it works for us. Oh, happening now. Andy, we're happening now. We're on. We're on. This is great. Okay. Very exciting. So here we are. I think this is the fourth episode of So Ask Us, which is our Mill District Facebook Live series where we're opening up the Mill District and letting everybody in to connect with us, to ask questions. I'm Hannah, the Director of Placemaking for the Mill District. I'm really excited. Excited. Um, in honor of things opening up a little more, I finally got my virtual background working. So in between filming from home, actually filming in the Mill District, this is the intro. We have a beautiful background. So <laughs> um, talking today to Andy Haas, who is the general manager of Cold Building Supply, which is super exciting. If you haven't been to Cold Building Supply lately, I highly recommend going in. They've been really keeping me sane through this time as I work on all the house projects. And Andy, are you so excited to be here with me? I'm very excited to be here. That was a very leading question. I and my hands are free for expression. <laughs> I told Andy he had to have his hands free for expression. <laughs> this is perfect. Awesome. So let's just dive right in because I know you have a busy day as things are starting to get going again. What has this been like for you guys? You've been open the whole time. You did limit hours a little bit, but then yesterday you went back to Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. So hopefully that means that you're seeing a little uptick as well and people coming in and sort of getting back to it. Yeah, no, people are coming out. Um, it was weird um, the whole time. We were an essential business, um, and uh, but that didn't mean that there was necessarily business to be had. Um, so when things first stopped and we changed the hours and cut them back to uh, five to three p.m. and closed on the weekends, we um, we was because there was nobody doing work and the contractors were having a hard time navigating what their lives were, you know, they could do some work, but the homeowners didn't want them in the homes. Their workers didn't want to be at work. So they were dealing with a lot of different things. So we were really just here if they needed us. And um, some people worked and, and a lot of more didn't. And yeah. the last few weeks, things, things did loosen up a lot. So yeah. um, it's been, it's been much better um, as far as people being more comfortable with the new rules and the new regulations and everything else. Um, and that's the big picture, you know, how are things going to get back? They got to get back, hopefully with some brains and some common sense and people can, you know, if we think about things, they can get back to work. And if they maintain their social distancing and they keep their masks on, things should be able to get back relatively quickly and safely. And that's the big part is mitigating all the people who want to just rush back and, and forget everything right. that we've been through for the last two months. So, yeah. you know, we, we've done a great job here. The staff has done a great job and the staff has worked through it. You know, Cole's building supply is, 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 is got a lot of seasoned people here. Let's put it that way. And um, even though some of them are at higher risk, they did work through, they wearing their masks. We do a good job um, cleaning and, and disinfecting things constantly throughout the day. We have a new cleaning czar, we called him. We gave him a, a name. He's a czar. Um, and who wouldn't want that title? Um, so that was, that's been working out really well, wiping down where the people touch the counters, the, the doors and things like that. Um, we have tape on the floors and, and we have, you know, the very mindfully tell people, Hey, can you please step behind the tape? Or, you know, you don't have to sign that. We can do it. 
Um, it's, it's things like that that'll make things easier as people get back. Because there are a lot of people now from the la- in the last week or two that just came out for the first time. You know, nice. basically they just, or they, they only went to the supermarket and that was it. So now they're, they're like coming out of the, of the house. Like it's uh like it's a, an awakening and, um, yeah. and they want to see how people are dealing with it. And I understand that, you know, my life didn't change at all. I still worked every day and, and things were, were going on every day. So for us, it's almost like, come on, it's okay. It's all right. You can make it come on out. <laughs> so, um, Thankfully, they've, they've come out. And I think when they get here, they feel pretty secure and, and uh, that we're trying to do the right thing. Um, you know, the mask thing, it's difficult because yeah. everybody's got to wear masks. We have regular masks. We have the masks, the Amherst masks. We have all the, the stuff that we're offering people that they're either selling them um, or people are coming in with their own concoctions. But sometimes when you're here for eight, nine hours, you have to pull it down and breathe a little bit. And if there's nobody around, people do that. And um, yeah. and it's just a matter of reminding our guys, you got to put that mask back on. You got to put it up. But, you know, that's just people. People, you know, uh, it's it's hard to change habits. So um, I think it's becoming a habit where it's on all the time and and um, and we're, we're, we're getting more used to it. And that's a big part of, of, of life going forward are these masks. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're touching on something that is really crucial and a challenge for business owners and business managers and business employees, which is this question of all of a sudden having to wear a lot of different hats. One is that you're doing the job you always do. You're selling things, you're connecting with people, you're making sure people have the products they need. You are now also holding space, like you say, for people who are coming back out into the world and looking for sometimes a little nonverbal guidance about how they should behave in a store, in a space that's not their home. And then there's also a question, and this has come up as I talk to a lot of business owners and managers about whose responsibility it is to police people, to tell people that they have to do something, to uphold the rules that the state is putting out there for everyone's safety. And I know, you know, we've been working together, the two masks that are hanging up behind you um, the gray mask says Amherst Strong on it. The other is an Amherst Pride mask getting ready for uh, Pride Month in June. Um, and to us in the middle district, creating some masks that were a little more fun, maybe easier to wear, easier to take on and off, easier to feel comfortable using all the time. That was our way of sort of helping uphold the rules and police a little bit. But I feel like you're really coming from a place where almost, and maybe it's just because I know you and I know your personality, but it's like the more casual we can be about reminding people of things, like not, not trying to, you know, boss people around or tell them that they're doing something right or wrong, but just to create a space where there's a mutual understanding of how we behave and how we can sort of gently say to people, you know, oh, behind the line, or like make a joke about it so that people don't feel like they broke a rule and they sort of tense up a little bit. Like, how do you help your staff with that issue of policing people? Well, that, you know, people, people are difficult and they're, and they're, (laughs) they're, uh, they're very different. Everybody's very different. And you saw that from when this whole thing started on how they handled the, how things were changing they didn't some people you know were super serious some people Mm -hmm. thought it was a joke some people so now the pendulum is kind of you know maybe hopefully settling in the middle where people understand that it is a real thing and people do have to deal with it and you have to you you have to realize that we live in a society like George Costanza said it's a society (laughs) so you have to you have to do stuff for each other and if it's putting the mask on Mm -hmm. and getting used to that or being stepping away from somebody, it's the overreactors always that make it hard. It's the people that that throw themselves out of the way if you walk too close and, and act like you know they've just been shot. That that makes it difficult for everybody, you know, to yeah. to handle it calmly. Um, so you know, we do a good job here of treating people like human beings. And you so too. if you talk to people like a human being 
and just say, you know, and be like you said, do it with good humor and, and, and good intent. And I think it's taken the proper way. If you if you have your hackles up and if you're if you're looking confrontational, then, then it does come across wrong. And you see that, unfortunately, in the news all the time about yeah. how people are handling the situation on both sides uh, incorrectly. So mm -hmm. if you treat people like human beings, hopefully that, you know, it works. So yeah. and, and communicating calmly and, and nicely to people is usually, you know, a, a, an innocuous way to do it. You don't you're not harming anybody. It's, so that's yeah. how we do it. That's how we try to communicate it to the employees. But everybody's a little different. Everybody is is a little, you know, especially the ones that are a little more scared of it and don't even know or have the confidence that the mask is enough or the cleaning solutions right. enough or everything. So there, it's a challenge, but, um, you know, this is just, it's, it's a, it's a constant battle that, that is, is normal for humans. Everybody's different. So you just yeah. got to keep dealing with it. Yeah. I think that's such a good outlook. That human approach is really like the most that we can do. And I'm curious, I know that Cole's Building Supply, one of the really awesome things about the store is that you have long standing relationships with a lot of contractors in the area. And I'm wondering um, if there's anything you can share about like how all of this has impacted some of those larger projects that people were trying to do on their homes when you have bigger companies coming in. What do you hear about how people have navigated this in the construction building industry? Well, I think the, the best news that we have is that things are still going on and, and plans are still going forward. Because um, nice. that's the big worry about the economy is the UMass coming back to school, what's happening with, right. with jobs and everything else. Things are still going forward and and there is some, somewhat confidence in that. Um, nice. Again, the, the contractor's challenge is dealing with their customer and their employees, which has been our challenge too, because everybody's a person, everybody's got their families, everybody's got their own yeah. concerns, you know, and, and it, it goes, it ranges from all over. And one of the lessons I've learned so far in this whole thing, and I've been a manager for 25 years, is how different everybody is. And, and we, we, did, mm. we went out of our way to try to talk individually to our employees, each one, one-on-one, -on -one, and, and get more in depth than, than we probably are allowed to, to um, just to uh, find out where their head is and where they're, you know, where, if they're okay with everything that's going on. And then yeah. the next level is trying to do that with our customers. And um, because we have such long relationships between, you know, the guys that have been here, Evan and, and Russ and, and, and the relationship they have with the customers, they can talk a little more in depth with them and, and what's their challenges and what can we do to help them overcome yeah. some of these challenges by, you know, either supplying them with things or giving them alternate ways to do things. Um, but, you know, we're very malleable. We can do anything that they need us to do to make their job easier and, and, uh, and, and get done. Um, yeah. So it, it, it has been a challenge though. Everybody is different all over the place. The contractors definitely have a challenge there. The state has different restrictions for them when they go on job sites. So right. they have to, and it's not easy to manage when you have crews all over the place in different settings. Um, and then you're dealing with other subcontractors that are there who have their own set of, you know, ideas of what's going on. So hopefully if the message could get out, if people could be passionate about the message that we can live again, as long as they do it safely and don't overdo it and keep yeah. the distance and keep the masks and such, a, and such and such, then things should be able to get back rather quickly and you can get your hair cut if you want and, and oh. uh, you know <laughs> things like that can happen God. let's hope so <laughs> these videos get increasingly hard to do the longer i don't get to do my hair not to be vain about it it's just the truth i'm just being honest the lift is open yeah, sure. everyone out there give the lift hammers the call <laughs> but no that's i think that's a really good point just about how many different people and opinions and groups are sort of colliding in the construction industry because you have so many different um, contractors coming from different backgrounds and different places. I think it's great that you took the time to really connect with your employees, with your customers, and meet them where they are and understand what their life is made up of and what their concerns are because they are different for everyone. And that's, that's the challenge, I think, of being a manager 
and a business owner is everybody has different ways of managing. I don't want to say that one way is better or worse, um, but taking that personal connection time and like you said, going a little deeper into the conversation, these are unprecedented times. I think it leads to unprecedented levels of communication between employers and employees sometimes. So it's, it's good that you took the time to do that and you feel like it's been helpful to do that. Yes, yes. And, and thank you for saying that. Thank you for the compliment. But yes, yeah. it's been super helpful. And I think going forward, it just strengthens our relationship with the employees, especially and because yeah. that's, that's the most important thing is the employees and how they react on the front lines to the customers and, right. and keeping everybody tied in. So, you know, this is, we, this is one of those very difficult circumstances, unprecedented, like everybody keeps saying, where empathy is, is the number one, number one trait that needs to come out. So yeah. um, I'm sure we've failed on a lot of fronts, but uh, in the course, but uh, we're trying. We're definitely trying. That's awesome. So I want to talk, since we've talked about Cole's Building Supply and your amazing uh, contractor customers, a lot of people might not be aware that when all of this started, uh, you were actually on the verge of getting ready to open another store, the Mill District General Store, which plans are still going forward for. Um, and I'm really excited because <laughs> Uh, Hannah's Gallery, which anyone who has watched um, us on Facebook Live or been following us on Facebook or Instagram previously knows that our local artist gallery and the Mill District General Store are going to be opened in the same space and kind of work together. So can you talk a little bit about sort of how the process kind of got stalled by all of this, but then also maybe some of, dare I say, the benefits of pausing and, and being able to take a look at what the general store is going to be and what it's going to offer the community now? I did not see this question in the prep questions, by the way. I'm sorry. You to, said you were I'm comfortable going off script. I'm just, <laughs> oh, just kidding. Um, no, I'm very excited about the general store. Um, as far as the process, the process has been long and difficult. And um, uh, there's many, you know, opening up a store, new store from scratch in a existing uninhabited building has been um, uh, different. Uh, let's let's That's stick to that. Word. I like um, that word. <laughs> uh, it wasn't. It was. It didn't definitely didn't happen as quickly as we would have liked. Um, but maybe because maybe that worked out because we would have been forced to close. Perhaps who knows what would have happened with this with this yeah. thing. Um, but, uh, I think it would have served the community would have served the mill district. If, if it comes to fruition rather quickly, it will serve the mill district and would have served it even more being open before this pandemic, because yeah. the goal of the general store is to be kind of the hub of the mill district. Uh, we yeah. want to be the, the, the center point, the town square, if you would, of the mill district. So, um, if we were there before we could have alerted a lot of people to what's going on, kept them abreast of rules and regulations and, yeah. and maybe, maybe even supplied them with things they needed like toilet paper and masks <laughs> and things that they were really hard to get that we're going to be the, the first place that they're going to want to go because they're going to know us. They're going to know the people working there. They're going to feel confident that we have things that they need at the different times uh -huh. of year and for the different things that are going on. Um, so I think it would have been good if we were open as for, from a community standpoint, for sure. Um, now that it didn't happen and we're still working on, on all the permitting and, and mechanicals and things that, like that that have to get the, have to be done before we can start the fun stuff. Um, I'm hoping that the general store is a model for how retail will be. I want to be one of the first new stores open coming yeah. out of this pandemic so we can be the model on what retail is like and going forward what retail should be for people in this world. Um, yeah. I think the experiential retail that we're gonna have there and the constant changing and events and things like that can still be done in a world where people are saying, oh, there's not gonna be anybody in football games, there's not gonna be any people you know, gathering. I think you can right. still gather smartly, you can do things with common sense and, and brains and still have um, 
be safe and still have events happen. So I think the, the general store is going to be a leader on that front. And, um, and I'm looking forward to getting in there and, and, and start, uh, you know, being there. And um, so the general store is going to have everything that, like, um, like Hannah was saying, it's going to have everything for the, the area that you can fit into a very small store. We're going to have <laughs> pet supplies and housewares and, and, and candy and, and fun stuff and, and all sorts of stuff, art supplies. So you're going to have the art gallery attached to it. We're going to have, we're going to have, um, little events. We're going to have everything that's going to happen is going to be community based and community integrated. Um, and this is the best time for that because I think as people come out of the shadows, um, they're going to want a place where they can feel safe and they can, they can definitely do that at the general store. Nice. That's awesome. And I think it really, I love what you're saying about, you know, being one of the first stores opening again and being, we throw this word experiential around so much. And I think for me through this process and as a creative placemaker professionally, it's easy sometimes to forget to turn that experiential view inward towards yourself, towards the, the businesses that we're opening. We think about it as, oh, it's experiential for the customer. It's experiential for the shopper. It's experiential for the community. But now this general store process is gonna be experiential for us too, as business owners and as people who are looking to change what the, the groove that retail was kind of in. And it's been so interesting, I think, through this pandemic, online sales for, you know, major stores like Target and Walmart and Amazon, online sales have gone through the roof. Local sales have suffered, even though so many local stores are rising to the occasion, are bringing in different merchandise, are listening to what the community wants. And so the idea that the general store is going to give us this opportunity to explore what retail, what brick and mortar, what community based really means. And I'm curious, are there things that you've thought about carrying in the general store that you didn't think about carrying before this happened? And now you're like, oh, well, that would be a great thing to have that hadn't occurred to you before. Um, you know, I want to say that there was some kind of epiphany when all this was like well we should have this or we should do that in the general store but really when we were discussing the, the general store and what we wanted there the goal was to pack everything in there so that yeah. you can even if you have some kind of now we can at least put a name to it though but you know you 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 want to have those emergency supplies you want to have those now it's pandemic uh. supplies or things like that um i think this just adds more emphasis to the games and that, that type of thing that we wanted to have things that you know you can do and have fun with because that's what people were really lacking and they were searching for you know you know different kind of educational things and different kind of things to do with each other i heard yeah. somewhere that that like kiddie pools sold out of everywhere that was open because everybody wanted to sit in the water or i don't know what or keep the kids <laughs> busy i don't know what you do with them but i guess i guess i guess they they sold out of everywhere because that was something so you know there wasn't one thing i said oh now we need to have that but it you know it just it goes back to i wish we would have had the store up and running and we wish we would have gotten our act together um quicker because i think we would have been a huge asset and i think that's where we would have really been putting in the, the long hours as opposed to to here where there wasn't any business we were here because at cole's building spot because we wanted to be there for anybody who needed us but you know, there's only so much propane and paint that people need in, at that time. And, and, you know, we weren't just, we weren't equipped to get all the other weird stuff out there. Right. Right. Definitely. I, for one, have done a lot of painting over this time of being home. So I can attest, Benjamin Moore paint at Cold Building Supply, really worth it. Um, yes. I think one thing we've also talked about with the general store um, that is, that is a new concept and definitely came before this conversation about how retail is changing, but um, is another opportunity to look at retail differently is how we've talked about engaging different vendors and business owners in Amherst by having them have a little section of the store that they are supplying or that's kind of bringing together stores downtown and having some things in the general store be sort of satellite locations 
um, or another way for people to be introduced to stores that are in the area so that the general store becomes really a connector, not just for people who are coming in at the same time or meeting each other there, but also for people who, you know, maybe just need a couple things and we have it in the general store, but then it sort of gets them excited about what that store, let's say Amherst Books, for example, has at its downtown location, because it's been important to us the whole time to not have the Mill District be fully separate from downtown, but something that really sort of infinity loops downtown and the Mill District together and encourages people to shop locally in both places. Um, are there, how did that idea sort of catch your interest and, and why do you think it's valuable, especially now? I think it's a great idea. It's, it's brilliant. Um, and it's bringing people from the other parts of town into our shop because as the hub, we wanna make sure that people come to us for what is good, what can I do here? What can I do there? And then when they come to the store, they see uh, a display of another store and then our, we have a fabulous young woman we're running the store. Her name is Stacy, and she's going to be selling these places that are in our store to the customers and be passionate about it. And hopefully that does push to the other local businesses. And then, that, then the whole integration between the other businesses and our business makes a stronger community that's offline, if you would, and on the ground. So, no, I think it's a great idea. Anything you can get to spark people's interest and anytime they come in that it is different makes it a better experience for them when they come in. If they come in and then they see the same displays and the same inventory all the time, then they're only going to come in when they need that one thing that they remember. They want we want people to come back because they never know what they're gonna see or what they're what's gonna be in the store. And these little kiosks, that's the word I was searching for, that have another store's merchandise and a, and a story about the other store is a great opportunity to do that than to push them to other local businesses as well. So they patronize other local businesses and stay, you know, away from the big box as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, and I think Stacy's going to be a great ambassador for these other businesses because she's a passionate person that I'm looking forward to getting going in there. Absolutely. I'm excited to introduce her. Hopefully we can have her on here. Um, in a couple of weeks and get her talking about the whole startup process for herself. I have to close my window. I'm not really outside. Hang on. People decided to mow and it ruined my whole illusion of being outdoors. I had to admit that I was really in my home office. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that it, it is exciting to think about the the general store, not just as a store in and of itself, but as a driver for figuring out new ways to serve the community, new ways to connect with people, new ways to encourage people to shop local, because coming out of this time, shopping local, which was already such an important thing and something that, you know, so many, not just the Mill District, but, you know, the, the Amherst Chamber, the Amherst Bid, all the chambers throughout the valley, everyone has really been putting so much effort into encouraging local shopping and encouraging people um, to, to get things where they live and ask for things if things aren't there. I think that's one thing about the general store that is exciting is that you can ask us to bring something in and we will do our best to bring it in for you and, and make sure that even though we're aware we're not gonna be able to have every single thing um, you know, big box stores with huge spaces can have every single thing, but we're going to try to have stuff that is tailored to what people are asking for and what people are wanting and really having a nice selection of a lot of different stuff in a store where you can come spend time when we're able to spend more time indoors. And also, um, we're doing a lot right now to activate the outdoor space in the mill district and the outdoor space outside of the store. There's a mural going in right next to where the store will be located. So hopefully that will create some outside space that people feel really comfortable being in. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the time. I did promise that I would only take up so much of your day. Um, anyone out there watching, if you have questions, please feel free to, to post them, put them up. Um, 
but I'm just curious, Andy, like as we move forward, um, what are some things that you get excited about maybe that we haven't talked about yet that you feel like this has sort of brought an opportunity for people to experience differently, whether it's shopping or coming together or maybe maybe people being more outspoken about what they want from the general store? Um, well, you know, I lived in that area for uh, about a year and a half, like right on the corner. And um, I think the whole area would love to have everything, you know, but the general store is going to allow them to be a conduit to bring in pretty much anything that they need um, at mm. any moment. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see what other stores are going to be there and how the general store can be perhaps maybe a gateway for them to come into that area. Maybe they yeah. put, their, put their toe in the water with us and put a kiosk there and see how it goes and see what interests go. So I'm excited to see how the general store helps the whole area grow by being that focal point, the communication hub and the, and the big ears of, of the community, you know, cause we want to yeah. be there. We want to talk, we want to be of the area. Um, see, I'm being expressive. I, that I appreciate me to do that. it. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, We're going to work years. big years into the design somewhere big in the years. store. <laughs> we need faster graphics so it could just go up there like that. Um, but I think I think that's an, an awesome thing that the general store is going to be able to do. Our, the goal of the store is to be, you know, of the community, to be the yeah. community hub. So it, it's gonna it's gonna help the whole area grow and help bring in other businesses. Yes, that is such a good point. I'm really glad that you mentioned that. And I totally agree. I think the general store is absolutely going to do that for the mill district. And it's such a good doorway into things, window into things. So stuff you need for the time we're in. I think that's like kind of the motto. Um, so I, I don't see any questions coming through. And I did promise you I would get you back to your day. But is there anything else you want to share or tell us about before I let you go back to your real, real life? No, no, no. This has been great. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on and um, good luck with the whole thing. And uh, I'm yes. excited about everything going on. And I'm yeah. excited about the opportunity for people to get back out and to yeah. smartly get integrated back to society. It's yes. okay to come out. It's okay to come out. It's so true. There, there are rules that help guide things. You can buy those awesome masks that are hanging behind Andy at Cole's Building Supply for 10 bucks. They're super comfortable, super easy to take on and off. Andy, I really, really appreciate your time and I appreciate everything you've said. I'm excited for the general store and excited to see you there and to keep evolving this and and talking about what the store can be for the community and i'm excited for Cole's building supply to keep being there for people because you guys do set such an amazing example of what a local store is to people and means to people so i really appreciate everything that you do thank Your you whole team yeah awesome well thank you i really appreciate you i hope everyone out there will join us next week, Wednesday at 11, June 3rd. It's June, mind blowing. Um, we're gonna be talking to Lev Benezra from the Amherst Survival Center. She's gonna be talking about how they've navigated this time, the huge swell of people who have needed things and how their volunteers have adapted and how they continue to, to serve the community, which is just phenomenal. So Andy, thank you. You absolutely rock. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.